Hello, I'm John with Roadkill Incorporated. Today I'm doing something a little different. Uh, you may or may not be aware that I make art with broken computers. I refurbish MacBooks, but there are a lot of broken ones, and I use broken screens and GPU defects as filters to affect my photography of trees and flowers. I load my photos onto the broken computers, let the defects affect the images, and then I take a picture, and then I'll load that picture onto another computer with a different defect, take another picture, and so on, creating multiple layers. You can see here a lot of my images on the walls of this uh, sort of box that you can walk around in and you know you can touch them and different interactions happen. Just sort of a fun way to uh, present my art in a different light. So anyway, I've done this kind of layered photography for a long time and you can see my work on my Instagram which is in the notes if you want to. Um, but then over the last year I've really gotten into uh, AR, augmented reality, which is what you see here. Um, as a means of presenting my art uh, in a different way. In AR, for those who don't know, you're basically seeing the world, but overlaid onto it are computer elements, as you can see here. So it presents an interesting opportunity for artists because you can bring your art in and see it in a way never before imaginable. Plus you can share it across the internet and have virtual galleries and, and things like that. Um, this, is a, this is in contrast to VR, virtual reality, which is similar, but in VR you're completely inside an artificial environment and you can't see the world at all. Uh, both are really great, but I think AR is more interesting personally. I think ultimately we'll find AR more useful than VR, and really they're both going to kind of mesh together and be the same thing, but for the moment they're referred to as two separate categories. What you're seeing here is the second version of a scene I call Computer Museum. All these scenes were exhibited in a couple shows here in Minneapolis at an event called ESC, Experiential Sensory Collective. They took place at REM5, which is just about the coolest VR lab you'll ever find. Uh, really recommend you check it out if you're in the area. Uh, but anyway, Computer Museum shows my art on the screens of vintage computers. I am really, really into collecting and refurbishing old computers, so bringing the two elements together uh, was a lot of fun for me. Um, I should say that most of the objects in these scenes aren't mine. Uh, there are huge libraries of 3D objects on the internet, which is great because you just search for whatever you want and um, objects just appear out of nowhere. It's, it's really cool stuff. So what prompted me to do this video right now is that Torch, the platform I use to make AR, is going away, probably due to COVID-related issues, I imagine. And it's really sad because it's a great company with a revolutionary product, and not only that, but great people who have given me a ton of support like no other company I've ever dealt with. Um, but since Torch is cloud-based and it depends on their servers running, basically anything created with Torch will stop working once they close their doors in just a couple days. This scene here experiments with moire patterns. Moire patterns are the patterns you get when you overlay one pattern onto another. When you do that correctly, additional patterns emerge, uh, which is really fun and interesting. Usually the patterns exist in black and white and in a 2D space, so I've been fascinated by the idea of taking more patterns into a 3D space where the patterns can intersect at different angles, and so for that, AR is perfect. Not only that, but with a platform like Torch, the viewer can grab objects, resize them, realign them, walk around them, and it's an absolute dream scenario for creating and exploring patterns. So anyway, back to why I'm making this video. Uh, very shortly, I'll never again be able to experience my Torch projects, so I wanted to make this video as sort of a final document of the work I've done. Torch, the company, has been really great as far as letting me download the objects I've created, but beyond the objects themselves, the framework as a whole will cease to exist in a couple days, and I'd have to recreate it on another platform if I wanted to see it again. And since, since this kind of thing takes dozens or even hundreds of hours to do, most likely my next AR experiment will be something else entirely. So yeah, realistically, this is it for these scenes that I've created. So everything up till now was from the second ESC show, and now we're switching gears to the scenes from the first ESC show. It just takes a second of, of setup here. And uh, what you'll see is the original version of Computer Museum. And as you be, you'll be able to tell, instead of existing in the real world in sort of an open air space, uh, the original is encased in a room, a 3D object that looks like a, a dingy room. And it's really much more VR in a way than AR, although if you look out the windows you can still see my yard.
So as you can hear coming up, there's sort of a sound, um, some audio playing. Um, I can associate in Torch uh, sound with particular objects. So you walk up to that object and you hear a sound get louder, which is which is really cool. So I wanted there to be sort of an ominous tone. Um, and you know you don't really know why it sounds like that, uh, but then you move further on in the scene and um, you know you finally get to see. <laughs> Anyway, aside from showing you the wonders of AR, one thing I really wanted to address in this video is the danger of using cloud-based tools. Now again, I've got to stress that Torch, the company, is amazing, so this is not a knock on them, and they did the best they could in this situation. But in so many ways in my life, I'm learning that you really have to be wary of the trappings of technology. Outside the realm of technology, as an artist, for example, I take photographs, and those photographs are mine. The computers I use as filters are mine. It's my responsibility to back them up and keep them safe, but ultimately there's nothing in the more traditional world that makes me dependent on anyone else, or gives anyone else authority or control over what I'm doing. But with technology, that's all different. Not just with art. Even with your choice of an email platform, for example, where you store thousands of personal communications, you have to ask yourself, do I really own this? Is it mine? Is the cloud provider I'm using for my files mine? Do I have any rights to my own stuff, really? What if the company involved disappears? What if they invoke a sentence I've never read in a terms of service agreement I've clicked OK on and one morning it all changes? I sold Apple laptops for years on Amazon and suddenly Amazon decided to dump its Apple sellers and this thing I thought I had, this way to make money I thought was a secure part of my life that I felt I was almost entitled to, it completely disappeared and I had nothing. It was almost like getting fired from a job and finding myself driving home immediately afterwards wondering what the hell happened. I just think that we should be far more wary of these platforms out there that we're using. I mean, I'm posting this on YouTube as if it's some kind of public utility that will always exist, and on Facebook, which gives me access to my friends, and without it I'd have no idea how to connect with so many of my friends, by the way. And it's too easy to feel like these networks are ours, that they're part of our lives like family, and they're permanent, and we don't need to worry about them. All I'm saying is that we should be more wary and more protective for our own good. I think we should ask ourselves systematically, what happens if I lose this platform over here and everything on it? What would I do? What about that platform over there? What would I do? In most cases, if you lose a platform owned by some company and you're not ready for it, you will actually lose something, and it could be something of great value. You'll lose a bunch of art. You'll lose connections to hundreds of friends. You'll lose your files. You could lose your livelihood. You could lose your privacy. You could lose basically anything and everything there is to lose if you put your trust in the wrong hands. We need to be careful and we need to make a backup of our online lives in case the plug gets pulled. Because plugs do, in fact, get pulled. It hits home for me because I'm saying this as I'm using my AR creations in Torch right now for the very last time ever. But you know, a few pieces of art, that's really nothing compared to all there is to lose in the world. I'm going to try to take this as a cautionary tale for myself, and I hope you will too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon right here on YouTube. <laughs> I'll leave you with some video of ESC 2.0, the second ESC show, where people used iPads to interact with all of these scenes.